Uh, this is Adrian Sledge, pastor and founder of Got to Move, also known as the Move Church. I send you greetings this evening. I know many of you, while most of us are sitting at home, whether we're quarantined, locked down, or whatever you want to call it, I just hope and pray that you're in, taking this time. I think for some of us, uh, this is a great time for us to kind of reflect and rest. Uh, because if many of us was not shut down, we probably wouldn't rest and sit it down. And God has given us an opportunity for us to kind of rest and chill out. Uh, those who are out there in the field uh, working, I'm praying for you, you nurses, uh, doctors, uh, daycare workers, all of you. Um, I got you in my prayer. Uh, so we just want to continue to um, pray and, and support each other through this process uh, of this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So let, let's just go to God in prayer before we get started. Uh, Father God, Lord, we thank you. You are the most high. Father, we ask you right now to continue to encourage us, continue to strengthen us through this season and through this time, Father God, that this situation brings families closer. Father God, give us a perspective of what's going on in our lives. Father, we pray for this Bible study tonight, Father, that we be able to open our minds as we discuss or how to have a better relationship with you. Father, we ask you to, in all these things we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So listen, I welcome you today from God to Move. First, I just want to uh, say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who have donated diapers or diaper wipes to our ministry. Uh, we had a great showing. Uh, I think right now the count, I think we collected almost uh, 2,700 uh, diapers, almost 3,000 wipes. Uh, so listen, we really, we're, we're supposed to be delivering these on Saturday at 10 o'clock. But listen, we were, we're, this is going to be an ongoing process. So listen, if you have diapers you want to donate to us, uh, make sure you get them to us, uh, especially diaper wipes. These young ladies need diaper wipes because looking at the shelves, people are just cleaning out the shelves uh, of diaper wipes. And I don't know why people are buying so many diaper wipes if they don't have babies because diapers doesn't have any deep, diaper wipes don't have any type of disinfectant on them. So uh, if you can, get us diaper wipes so we can get to these young ladies. Uh, at the Young Lives of Cold Pepper. Uh, so we will be delivering these diapers. So we thank you very much. Also, uh, by the time we end Bible study, I'm going to discuss uh, what our plans are for this Sunday uh, and what we're going to do because we will not be able to meet at the Holiday Inn. Uh, because of the lockdown, uh, we're not able to meet at our normal location. Uh, I had some plans to do a worship service with just me and the Minister of Music, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So I will talk about that at the end of this um, Bible study. I will talk about what we're going to do and what uh, we need from you, uh, those who are attached to the Move Church or a part of the Move Church. But today I want to talk about uh, improving relationships with God. Uh, through this series, we've been talking about improving relationships, different type of relationships. We, we started off talking about improving relationship with parents. Um, children, blended families. We talked about proven relationships in the marriages, the husband and the wife. Uh, last week, we talked about improving the relationship at your at your job or, or at work. So, but what we must understand in order for us to uh, maximize opportunity and gain victory through excellence, which is what our ministry is a part of, you have to be able to improve and work on relationships and have better relationships. But one of the relationships, I believe, and I, and I think this is a blessing in a way that we're on lockdown, because I really believe that you can take this now, you can actually take the time, is to try to improve your relationship with God. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. God has not changed this relationship with you. He loves you. Uh, uh, he wants to have a better relationship with you, or he wants you to have a better relationship with him. Uh, but God has not failed in this process. God has not turned his back on you. God does not stop loving you. Uh, there's nothing you can do for God to turn away from you. But however, uh, and many times we can, we, I think we all can improve on our relationship with God. Uh, and your relationship with God is not based on how many times you come to church. Uh, and it's, and it's evident now that so many churches are having to shut down. You cannot go to the house of God. But just because you can't go into the house of God does not mean you cannot improve your relationship with God at home. And, and maybe this is a time and a great time 
for us. And I'm going to give you some points because I could be here all night on how you can improve your relationship with God. I, this is not a Bible beating Bible study. This is not one of them step on your toes Bible studies. But this is just a type of Bible study so I can encourage you and give you some tools on how you can build your relationship and become better in a better relationship with God and better connecting with God. So let's kind of talk about that. Why is having a good relationship with God is important? Because he's God, clearly. He's God. And we want to be able to maximize every opportunity that God has for us. We want to be able to enjoy every blessing God has for us. And the reality is you don't want God upset with you because the reality is that even though God loves you, God does get upset with us from time to time We're not when we're not living according to his word. But the first scripture I want to go with, and it's pretty much common, some of you who are Bible readers probably aren't, have an idea uh, which way I'm going, but the first one I want to go to is 2 Chronicles, since it's so common, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Listen, thank y'all for coming on. I see Pastor Davis, Brother Turner, I see you Mary Taylor, I see my daughter Brittany, I see you Karen Brown. I think I missed some folk on the stroll, but uh, if I missed you, don't charge it to my heart, charge it to my mind and my eyes. Amen. But 2 Chronicles chapter 7, uh, I want to start with the 14th verse, and I want to give a couple of reasons, highways we can improve our relationship with God. I say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from heaven and forgive their sins and hear their land. So one of the things we, we have to realize that I love about this text in verse 14, that I want to kind of stand out, is that no matter how far we are from God, he still recognizes us as his people. No matter how much we sin, no matter how much uh, 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 we uh, want to curse God through our actions and through our lifestyle, how much we don't pray and go to church, he still recognizes you as belonging to him. Uh, you belong to him because he created you. You belong to him because he invested in you and he loves you. You are his child. And one thing God will never do, God will never disown his children. And here's the thing we must also realize and understand. Just because you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you still belong to God. Uh, people, you know, we, we treat people who are not saved, <clears throat> excuse me, not saved as individuals who, who don't know God or they don't really love God, that God does not love them. No, you are, you belong to God. Uh, so you're never, uh, God never falls out of fellowship with us. We fall out of fellowship with him. And he says, if you call by my name, will humble themselves and pray. One of the things is, is that you cannot believe in your heart. If you want to improve your relationship with God, you cannot believe that you're bigger than God. You cannot believe you don't need God to process and live every day. Uh, that is a dangerous situation to be in when you cannot even submit and be humble to understand that relationship. We are not equal with God. Let's be also clear with that. Uh, we are friends of God, but we're not equal to God. We're not above God. That We're not in a situation where God needs us. We are in a situation where we need him. And that will kind of cultivate that relationship once we understand our role in the relationship. But in order to understand your role in the relationship with God, you have to first humble yourself. You have to kind of step back and show some humility when it comes with your relationship with God. And, and not only that, because what happens is when you don't show a level of humility, humility, uh, you will not pray. They say, look, uh, humble yourself and pray and look and seek his face. Look for him. Um, many times our prayer life is what connects us to God. You can't be so humble. You know how you're in a relationship with homies or you got friends. Some of y'all got friends uh, and you're on your phone, director, and you have this attitude of he should call me or she should call me and I should not call them. That is not the relationship you want to have with God. We are supposed to seek him. He is not supposed to be looking for us. Uh, we're supposed to be initiating the conversation through prayer with him. In other words, you don't wait for him to call you. You call him first. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And that's how you improve that relationship, understanding where you are in the relationship, understanding who you are, that we don't get so arrogant that we think God is supposed to be waiting on our call or God is supposed to be waiting on us. The reality is that we should be seeking God because we don't have to wait on God because God is already here. God has not went anywhere. He's not, he hasn't disappeared. He's just waiting on you to call him and to seek his face. 
and and prayer and seeking, seeking in prayer and not just praying for him to him just because you need something, not just not praying to him because you're in trouble. And that's one of the problems many of us have is that the only time we pray is when we need something from God. That is not being humble. Uh, that's not being a good being in a good relationship. Uh, when you call people just when you need them, the reality is we have some of us have become users of God, which is hurt it, which is hurt our relationship with him because we cannot see who for who he really is, that he's always been a provider, that he's always been a healer. He's always been a caretaker because we are so caught up that we think God is supposed to is like a genie in a bottle that when we rub him, he's supposed to show up. No, we're supposed to pray and seek him, look for him, uh, uh, in, initiate the relationship, initiate the conversation with God because you want reason you should do it because he's worthy and no matter what you've done, he always will listen and recognize you. But look what he also says because I didn't want to get it. There's a whole lot of scripture I could have used, but I like this one basis. It said, turn from their wicked ways. In other words, in order us to build our relationship with God and improve our relationship with God, we have to turn away from sin. We have to repent. I know this is. I know sin is not a popular subject uh, with a lot of people. You don't want your pastor, your preacher talking about sin. You don't want to address sin. But guess what? The Bible talks about sin, and sin is a barrier, or basically, are uh, turning our back on God. And many times, God does not sin. God does not lie, so he never turns our back on us, but through our sins, we turn our back on him. And what God wants us to do is, he, listen, he said he wants us to turn from our wicked ways. He don't just want us to ask for forgiveness. Now, understand, uh, in order to prove a relationship with God, we do need to understand the difference between repentance and forgiveness. Now, God said he's faithful to just forgive us of our sins, but God wants us to repent. He wants us to turn away from that that keeps us separated from him. And, and I think many of us, this is a great time in a season that some of us are in quarantine and locked down that we can go to God right now and say, listen, let me reexamine my life. Because uh, here's the thing, let's be honest, I'm, and I'm saying this jokingly and I'm saying this seriously. Some of us, the only reason we're not sinning right now is because we're locked up in the house. Oh, uh, let's be honest and be clear. But God, this is a time for us to reflect where we are and say, hey, I don't have to live that lifestyle anymore. I don't have to continue to go down that road because God is not pleased. God is not happy. And I'm not doing anything to edify the kingdom of God. He wants us to turn from those wicked things. He wants us to walk away from it. Because how can we commune with God and commune with the devil at the same time? How can we say we, we, we're walking with God, but we're living in sin and, and expect the world to look at us at a wit, as a witness and take Christianity seriously when we don't even take our relationship with God seriously? And he, this is what he says he'll do. And he, and he says this, if you do these things, he has a promise for you. He has a promise for you. This is, this is the best up thing. He doesn't owe us anything. Let's get clear. God does not owe you anything. He doesn't owe me anything. But he is so loving that if you just, hey, listen, humble yourself, pray and look for me and turn from those things, I will hear from you. I will pick up the phone. I will pick up the phone. The problem is God is saying, listen, some of us, God, basically God said, listen, until you do these things and humble yourself and recognize who I am, I'm not picking up the phone. Have you ever been in a relationship where you felt like you've been taken advantage of and people are treating you well? What do you do? You put them on the do not call list on your cell phone. They call, you, you ignore them, you send them straight to voicemail. And God is doing the same thing. Why would you want your prayers hindered and your relationship hindered and God is not there to hear you when you need him? Because God is saying, listen, if you do these things, you pumper yourself, you seek my faith, turn away from that sin. Guess what? I will pick up the phone. I will answer you. Look, look what he says. And I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. In other words, God is saying, listen, I'm not asking you to do uh, black flips. I'm not asking you to do uh, 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 stuff. Uh, do do cartwheels and t testify and tell everybody your business. I'm not telling you to go before the church and sit before the church and tell them that I say, all I'm asking you to do is, is in order to improve this relationship, because I love you. This is what God is saying, because I love you. All I want you to do is seek my face, pray, 
Turn away from those things that are hurting you. Turn away from those things that I that I uh, uh, talked about, that I told you not to do. Turn away from those things. And guess what? I'm faithful. I will forgive you and I will heal. I will give you back everything that you lost. I will heal your body. I will heal your finances. I will heal your family. But the reality is many of us, let's be clear. <clears throat> It's not that God cannot bless us. It's that we're not in a posture or position for God to bless us. Come on now. And, and oh, no, let me, no, no, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, that we are hindering the relationship with God. God has never hindered the relationship with us. God has always been there. He will always be here. He just waiting on us to get ourselves together, get our lives together. And listen, I understand it's a pandemic, but what an awesome time to say, and I don't care what people say. The only reason you spread, so you're praying now because we're in trouble. The only reason uh, you're praying because we're a bit. So what? This is a great time and a great opportunity to say, listen, Lord, you are in charge. God, I love you. I want a better relationship with you. And I'm going to start it right now, man. Listen, I still got some other scriptures to God. I can stay on this one all day, but that's one of the ways we can get a better and improve our relationship with God is to humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, turn from our sins, turn from my wicked ways. Here's the other thing. Uh, I think another way we can improve our relationship with God. And I think many of you should try to take advantage of this while you have the time. Many of us really have the, we have a lot of time on our hands. Uh, because like I said, we, most of us can't go nowhere. And I, and, and here's the thing. I trust me. If you try this, if you try this, I promise you, in these next two weeks, 10 days, if you be faithful to what I'm saying, I promise you, your relationship with God will blow your mind. You will come out of this situation better than when you went into. Your God will protect your finances. God is going to protect your health. God is going to protect your children. God is going to protect your sanity. Everything, I promise you, if you just trust what I'm telling you tonight, and when I'm going to these scriptures, I'm showing you tonight, God will make a way. God will make a way. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Here's another way I believe you can improve your relationship to God. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, I want one of the things is, is that many, uh, many of us, we don't really can have a relationship with God because many of us don't know God. It's hard to have a relationship if you don't know them. Yeah, one way is to pray that we have a constant communication through him, through the Holy Spirit. But here's the other thing. You got to read his word, y'all. Look, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want to read verse 16 and 17, I believe. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction, for instructions and in righteousness, that the man of God may be completely may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let me read that again. All scripture, not some, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions and in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped in every good work. Here's the thing. We have to read the word of God. Right now, many of you cannot go to church. I understand there's a lot of people going to church online. We're having worship services online, all this stuff going on. But you still have to read the word of God for yourself. You still have to have your own Bible study. You have Because here's the thing. The Bible inspires us. It gives us a correction. It, it, it instructs us on righteousness that you cannot even be complete unless you read the word of God. The word of God is what's going to sustain you. The word of God is what's going to help you stay away from sin because you can't even identify what sin is because you don't. we don't read our Bibles. The Bible identifies what sin is. Also, it's going to help us love, but you can't understand how to love until you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where it tells you what love is and what love is not. This, take this time to read this word and gain inspiration. Uh, too many of you spend, some of us are spending too much time watching the news right now. We're listening to what Donald Trump is saying. We're listening to what the governor is saying. We're listening to what our political leaders, they're arguing back and forth over the stimulus package. We don't know what they're going to do. But the one thing I know that is true, that will not lie, is God's word. Matter of fact, let me go to Psalms 119. Uh, Psalms 119, uh, verse 1 and uh, 105. Psalms 119, verse 105 said, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In other words, that his light, 
His word gives gives a uh, vision. His word uh, uh, give us direction and guidance. And no matter what the television telling us, no matter what the news is telling us, God's word is infinite. Guess what? God's word was here before the coronavirus. His word will be here after it. His word was here before Donald Trump. His word will be here after Donald Trump. It doesn't make, I'm not hating on our presidents or our leaders, but what I'm saying is no matter what's going on, nothing can sustain us. If you don't know the direction you want to go in right now, Oh my God, if you don't know what direction you want to go in right now, I dare you to pick up the word of God. God will tell you that. Look, God has been through famines. God has been through diseases and people have walked out of it. This is nothing new to God. The Bible said there's nothing new under the sun to God. And God has healed everything these people before. And guess what? According to my Bible, the same God that healed smallpox, the same God that healed uh, malaria, the same God that healed measles, the same God that healed the plagues, this, oh my goodness, the same God that healed polio, it's be the same God that will come in here because God does not change, but you have to read his word. Because when you read his word, you'll stay encouraged. When you read his word, you won't be afraid. When you read his word, you, oh my God. Oh, I got to go to this next thing. I got to go to this next thing. But but the word of God is so sustaining. And this is a period that, hey, you, if you're going to be locked up, what not what not be locked up with the word of God? What's not being, well, if you need something to read, read the word of God. This is your opportunity. This is your time to study the word of God and get a better understanding of who God is so you can have a better relationship. What an awesome situation. You left and got isolated. God created a situation that, hey, listen, I needed you to talk to talk to me. I needed you to pray with me. I needed you to have a relationship and read about me. Listen, if you read this word, you'll find out that God is bigger than what we're going through right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. I got one more thing and we're going and we're done. We're done. So not only you want to prove your relationship with God based on second Chronicles is humbling yourself, prayer, seeking his face, turning from my wicked ways. You want to be in his word, uh, being his word, reading his word, understanding his word, because you can't be complete without his word, letting them guide and be the light to your path, uh, the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. In other words, wherever the word of God goes, I go. Uh, wherever the word of God leads me, I follow. But lastly, and this is all a collection of, of what we're doing. Uh, Y'all pray for me, man. I'm man. Listen, uh, this is some, some good stuff because we've been talking about a proof relationship with people. Now we're talking about proven relationships with God. This is why this is important. The other, the other five lessons were important. Let's go to Matthew 6. And while you're at Matthew 6, turn to 1 John chapter 4. Matthew chapter 6. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 is one of the most famous prayers we all pray that many of us know. It's called the model prayer. Some of you call it the Lord's Prayer. But there's one verse in there that will dictate uh, our relationship with God, well, what is important that can separate us from God. And here it is. Matthew chapter six in the Lord's prayer. I'm going to read the whole thing. Our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let me reverse this back. In the middle, somewhere in the middle, it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In order to have a better relationship with God, we have to have a better relationship with each other. Uh, this text says that forgive us our debts or forgive us our sins or our trespasses the same way we forgive those. God really wants us to have a better relationship with us. If you want to have a bad relationship with God, have a bad relationship with, with each other. Let, let's go to 1 John, and I'm, and I'm going to go back and forth. 1 John chapter 4 says, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has sinned, how can he love God who he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God, must love his brother also. Here's the thing. In my relationship with my wife, I love my wife wholeheartedly. Now, my wife, for so some people, can be an acquired taste. Some people like her. Some people may not like her. I like her. 
Here's the reality. You can't say you love me and don't love my wife. Period. Period. You can't say, because my wife is who I am, is who I'm attached to. So you can't say, oh, I love you, Adrian, but I hate Ronica. No, it doesn't work that way. Because guess what? If you say you love me, then you got to love my wife. And that's what God is saying. God is saying, how can you say you love me? How can you say you love me, and, 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 but you but you hate the other, the what I created? Oh, y'all don't miss that. You you see, many of us have destroyed our relationship with God because we destroyed our relationship with each other. We walking around here with grudges. We hating people. You can't hate your brother. Well, you can, but stop hating your brother and then going in church and you're shouting. You're shouting and running, throwing over pews, speaking in tongues, but you hate folk. You won't forgive people. Don't you know all that running and jumping, all that hollering? God is not honoring that because what it is is that when you operate, and I'm going to be clear, and I'm going to say it straight up. You may not like it. When you operate like that in church, sing in the choir, shout. Preach, in the, preach the gospel and do all that church ritual stuff you do and you have lack of forgiveness for other people, that is considered wicked and God wants you to turn from that. That is wicked and demonic to be acting a fool in church shouting or whatever and you hate your brother, you hate your sister. That's not godly. It's impossible. The Bible says it. I didn't say it. That's why you should read your Bible. First John says that, that if you say you love, how can you say you love God and hate your brother? You are a liar. And lying is a form of wickedness and demonic activity. The devil is a liar. You remember in Genesis when the devil lied to Adam and Eve? The devil is a liar. So here's the thing. If, if, if you are saying that you love God, you're trying to celebrate and worship God, but you hate your brother, you got grudges, you got people you haven't forgiven, you got people you don't take care of, you got people you hate, guess what? You are a liar and you're no different than the devil. That's real word, and that's real talk. Uh, and I mean, and I know I understand you don't want to hear that or whatever, but guess what? I got to preach it because it's in the word of God. And if you read the word of God yourself, you will understand that if I want to improve my relationship with God, I have to start forgiving people. If I want God to, when I turn from my wicked ways and I want God to forgive me, guess what? Guess what? I got to forgive others. Man, man, I'm going to tell you something. You cannot operate in sin and, and you can't operate in the hate. You can't operate in grudges. My, 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 matter of fact, right now, during this season, during this pandemic, we don't even know how we're going to come out of this. We don't even know when the next time we're going to see our loved ones. We don't even know when the next time somebody may die in our family. We don't know what the outcome is. This is not the time for us to hold grudges with one another. This is the time to call our families, check on them. Hey, I listen, I know I was upset with you. I'm sorry. I love you. I hope everything. This is not the time. God is showing us right now that the kingdom of God has to be better on our behavior. We have to be better and improving our relationship with God and why not now? You ain't got nothing else to do. Only thing you can go, you can, some of y'all can't go to work. Some of you can, kids can't go to school. You can't, you, all you can do, hey, there's no meat in Walmart. Guess what? So guess what? You ain't got nothing else better to do than say, listen, I need to sit myself down and try to figure out how can I improve my relationship on God? We have to love one another. We have to uh, be 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 uh, respectful. One another. I know I'm looking at my watch because I'm almost done. But you want you want to run after God. You want to seek God because when God heals you, when God, heals, let me tell you something. You can call Pastor Sledge, and I can get distracted by a conversation on the other end. You can call me or call somebody else, and I probably can't help you the way you really, really need to be helped. Because all I can really do sometimes is pray. I may be able to give you money, but man, when you get to a place, you know that God is listening. Oh my God. When you get to a place when you know that God is hearing your prayer, when you get to a place when God, when you know that, hey, when I speak to God, he speaks back, he picks up the phone. Let me tell you, there's nothing like picking up a phone and calling, look, what they say, Jesus is on the main line, tell him what you want. When you are praying, you are humble, God will give you the heart, the, the desires of your heart. He will bless you. He will heal you. And listen, listen, even if God does not take us out and deliver us out of this situation, he'll give you you uh, uh, the perfect peace. He'll give you the perfect peace through this mess. And through this mess, I've been able to maintain because, yeah, am I afraid too? Yes, I get scared sometimes. Yes, I'm worried sometimes. And, but you know what? But I know that God 
is the uh, uh, is the winner. God is number one. God is the healer, and he and he's in charge of all this. But listen, use this as an opportunity to get to know God better. Use this as an opportunity to reevaluate your life and see where you are with God. And I promise you, I promise you, if you read his word, if you sit down with him through this process, I believe you will come out of this thing. I'm not saying you will come out rich, but I believe you will come out of this thing. God answers prayers. God is a healer. And you will come out of this thing better. And then guess what? When we come out of this thing, oh my God, if the people of God, if the, my people should turn, my people should humble themselves. Pray, seek my face, turn from his wicked ways. Man, the, the man, let me tell you something. Man, the kingdom is gonna be off the chain. Listen, I'm done. I'm done, y'all. Uh, I got some house clean. I got some things I want to put out. Praise be to God, man. Let's give God a hand praise if where you are. Come on, let's let's give God a hand praise wherever you are. Praise God and worship God wherever you are right now. Praise him through this mess. Praise him through this situation. Praise him through this. The God is worthy of our praise regardless of the situation. He's worthy of our worship. Listen, get rid of your grudges. Get rid of your hate. Uh, turn from that wickedness, reevaluate your life, and God will bless you. Listen, listen, listen. This Sunday, this Sunday, we will not be meeting at the Holiday Inn for a couple of reasons. One, because our governor has asked that we do not have congregate more than 10. Now, that's a positive for us that got to move because I remember there was a time it was only seven of us we could have been able to meet. But praise God, God has given us an increase so we don't have just seven people coming to our church no more. Come on, give God praise for that. Give God praise for that. But however... Um, I can't ask you to to follow my leadership if I refuse to follow the people that God has put in them to govern us. So we're going to respect that. But this is what we're going to do Sunday morning, still on first, third and fifth Sunday. I will be on Facebook Live. I will present a sermon. We will do a sermon. We'll pray. Uh, I may even sing. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. But I will do some different things. We'll see. I will also... So this Sunday, we'll be on Facebook Live on my page at 9 o'clock for the Mood Church uh, uh, word for the sermon. I will give you a sermon on the first, third, and fifth Sundays. I will continue to do that. I will also, because we'll still be doing this on Wednesday night until we see things differently. Also, this Saturday, if you'd like to join me this Saturday, if you can, at 10 o'clock, we'll be at the Cold Pepper, Cold Pepper Presbyterian Church delivering diapers. So you want to help me unload these diapers because you remember got to move is more of an outreach ministry. So we'll still be doing some different projects. If y'all see some projects out there that we may be able to try to be a uh, help to, please let us know. Also, uh, I challenge all our move ministry members to continue to give on those Sundays. We have two ways you can give. Uh, we have our, our cash app, which is dollar sign got to move. The number two got to move dollar sign got to move. Or you can mail in your tithes and your offering to P.O. Box 2022. P.O. Box, the address is P.O. Box 2022, Cold Pepper, Virginia, 22701. Mary, I'm going to sing just because you said no singing, please. So, <laughs> so I'm going to sing now. But um, uh, but P.O. Box 2022, um, the cash app hashtag got to move. Listen, if you need me, call me, send me an MX message. I'll pray with you, pray for you. Uh, if you can't get out and get something, listen, let us know. Let somebody know. Uh, help somebody else. Check on your neighbors. Check on your friends. They don't have to be part of the Mood Church or whatever. Let's all continue to check on each other and make sure that we're all okay. So that's where we are. But thank you. Um, uh, the um, executive pastor, minister, uh, Ronica Slayer, just put up our address. She puts up, she put up our, uh, our cash app. So please come on out. But Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, I will have a word for you. Uh, one, my goal right now, I probably want to do it outside. I'll probably be outside. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what we're going to do. But we're going to also continue on our series. I'm preaching on a series called the Part 2. They really did a number on you. They really did a number on you. Dealing with, I call, congregational uh, abuse or congregational fellowship abuse or church hurt. But right now, I don't think anybody really has to worry about too much church hurt right now because we ain't even at church. Uh, so listen, Saturday at 10 o'clock, we've been at the Cold Pepper Presbyterian Church. Listen, if you know people that still want to bring in diapers, still want to be a part of this, we're still accepting diapers. Uh, we were going to stop this, but here's what we're going to do. If you want to collect diapers and donate diapers through, through, throughout this period, uh, through this time, throughout this time, listen, we will accept them. 
Uh, we'll accept them. We'll keep collecting them right now. We'll extend this kind of thing past whenever we need to stop. But if you have diapers, you want to donate to the diaper drive through our cash app, through, through uh, putting money in my hand. But I also want to thank all of you, the Mormon church, all of you who have helped participate, as we, like I said, with this diaper drive. So listen, take care. Uh, I will be posting this about in the next 20 minutes on YouTube. Listen, go to the YouTube account, go on the YouTube, type in Got to Move, and subscribe to our Got to Move page, YouTube. We have all the Bible studies on there. I will be posting those throughout the week to try to keep people uh, engaged in the Word of God. Read your Bible. Pray to God every day. Get a better understanding of where God is, and God will bless you. Listen, I love you. Stay safe. God bless you.